Hello and welcome back. This time we want to talk about uh, which of which parts an error may consist. Okay, so let's start. I will draw now a graph. This this here is the display value. The Anzeigewert. Yeah. And this here is the measured value. Okay, the messwert. The theoretical line should be some what like 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 t -t 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 -t, here somewhat like this huh? zero zero linear line with a certain with a certain steepness huh? let's call it V theoretical that's the theoretical curve okay if we can now apply exactly some points in the measured value we may see something like this that for instance the starting point is not zero zero but already something yeah and the end point is not there but here for instance yeah? then we do have different different curve Ooh. Ah, it's not exactly linear but good enough good enough for me so here I'll make it red red for an error yeah here we do have delta y zero yeah. Zero point failure, null point failure, and here we also have another another steepness. So we have a steepness error. Yeah. So we have a delta delta phi here. That's phi minus phi theoretical. That's the steepness error. Okay. Okay, then there might be more. Yeah? There might be more. It might look like this. Not linear, but curvy. Okay. So then we would have here a linear fault. Linearity fault. This is the measurement fault, linearity fault, yeah, or this is the line fault, let's call it. Somehow a combination out of zero point error and steep error. And then we have a linearity fault. And then it might even be possible that if we are increasing the measured value, it looks like this. And if we are decreasing, it maybe looks like this. Yeah said that we do have some hysteresis yeah. so then we have a hysteresis error also okay. and everything is depending on the x coordinate on the measured value it might be different here 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 yeah. and if i'm able if i'm able to apply exact values here I could measure this real this actual curve of a measurement system and compare it to the theoretical curve yeah if I record this actual curve this is called calibrating okay so the first thing I do is to calibrate
calibrate is the recording of this curve. Yeah. With the calibration data, I can then trim, adjust, trim or adjust my measurement. Yeah, because this then is like an an uh, systematic error, and I could trim. Maybe I have some potentiometer or something like this to 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 change. Yeah. I can change my measurement system in order to make it more like the theoretical curve. Yeah? Trim, or in German, justieren, calibrieren, justieren, calibrate and trim. Yeah? And if this trimming is done by some officials yeah, and they take a lot of money for it, yeah, then it's, it's called adjusted. To standard yeah. or in German in German this would here be calibrieren this would here be justieren and this here in German there's even an, an, an own word it's called Eich yeah, it's not a tree. Echi. Adjustment to standard. This one can be done by trained people. Okay. This one brown color. This one at least in Austria in Austria this is only of officials. In Austria it's called BEV Bundeseich und Vermessungsamt. Okay? Bundeseich und Vermessungsamt may Eich adjust to standard. You can trim it, can be equally good, but sometimes sometimes you even need to adjust it to standard, especially if there are things involved like like uh, charging yeah for instance on the gas station the pumps and the flow meters and so on they need to be adjusted to standards every I don't know two five years something like this yeah? or at home the energy counter or the water water volume counter these are all things which had to be uh, verified by the Bundeseich und Vermessungsamt, which had to be adjusted to standards. They have their own procedures there, they have their own equipment, and then they guarantee an accuracy of this measuring device. And if the accuracy is good enough, it can be used to charge. Yeah. To let the people pay with these measurement values. Okay, so how how is this usually done? How is how is in reality, yeah, or in reality, in in daily, practical daily, yeah, how to check a measurement device? Yeah? Usually, usually at every place there is something called standard normal, yeah? so or betriebsnormal. So, or Gebrauchsnormal, normal of usage. Yeah. Normal of usage. So, maybe in your, in your workplace you have some micrometer screw, for instance, yeah? and then you have some block. You check that the micro micrometer screw at exactly this block, and you know this block is that long. Check what the manometer, micrometer screw is showing you. If it fits, it fits. Yeah, normal of usage. Yeah. Every once in a while, this normal of usage is is checked against a, a reference normal with a higher accuracy. Yeah. Usually, every company 
does have somewhere such reference normal. Yeah, this is checked against a reference normal. This is still in the company. The red one is in the company. Okay. No, normal of usage. Checked against the daily used measurement equipment is checked against the normal of usage. The normal of usage is checked periodically to the reference normal. And then there is the national normal. So there's the nation then. There is one or more, if the nation is big enough, there is the national normal. In Austria, the ones who check or have the reference normal is this Bundeseigenvermessungsamt. Yeah. National normal. So the reference normal is checked against the reference normal. This might be done by the officials. Yeah. And then this national normal is then checked against, and now we are at the highest level, international. That's the international normal. International normal. Okay. This is checked against this one. Yeah? So basically they are all copies of each other. Yeah? This is heavy in use. This is rarely in use because every nation goes there and check if their local, let's say their local norm meter is exactly the meter and so on. Yeah. So this, this is what comes out of the SI. There's a video about it of this SI. Um, unit system. So every normal of use is uh, checked against a higher level normal. So there is then certificates and, and protocols and so on. And with the certificates and protocols, this normal of daily usage could be as accurate as the international normal. Yeah? But the chain must be kept. So this has a great importance in the ISO 9000. This is the quality, quality standard. Yeah, there all the things are described in detail. How to and which, which uh, reference and which protocol and which certificate you have to use that this one is valid. I always tend to say guilty. <laughs> it's not guilty. It's valid, of course, because. Guilty, uh, valid in Austrian or in German means gültig, and gültig and guilty are so close phonetically. <laughs> ah, doesn't really matter. So, if this is valid, this is usually somehow covered in norms, but this is the standard standard procedure. Okay. So, these are the error parts. How an error may be separated into different into different root causes let's call them this is then what you can do against it this is if you if some officials do it yeah and this is how to get a reference at your workplace okay a normal of daily usage to check your measurement equipment good yeah that's it for the for the error part and so on. Yeah. Uh, next time we are talking about the statistics. Yeah. We said okay, there are not only these these uh, type of errors which do have uh, a sign and a, v a value which can be compensated. So the uh, compensatable errors. Yeah. There are also random errors yeah and random errors we said we can only deal with random errors with statistical uh, methods and we want to look into the deviation or into the 
yeah, into the deviation which we could expect from one measurement. And if we can say something about it and then calculate a little bit around with it. Okay, this will then be in next video. So long. Thank you for listening. Goodbye.